which really brings us <laughs> to our next topic, Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz 2. It's the sequel. The sequel. The only thing they need to make this sequel better is to get The Rock. <laughs> Dwayne The Rock Johnson is the king of sequels. They need to get him there so they can hype this up a little bit better. Hype it up, lay the smack down. King yeah. Kong, King Kong Ortiz. Deontay the Bronze Bomber, Wilder, he means business. First thing I know people are thinking, do we actually want to see this fight? Um, as a boxing fan, honestly, no. Mm-hmm. Um, Why don't you want to see this There fight? are other fights we want to see instead. Of course, we want, of course. If we're talking about sequels, <laughs> we want to see Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. That's what the people want. That's what I want. That's what you want. That's, that's what, what I want. That's what the American people want. Tyson Fury doesn't really want that. He Tyson says he Fury. does, but he doesn't. He, he, he's not going to make that call. Right now, it's not the right time for him to do that. Why? It's because he's just waking up from the twelfth round, and he was in a daze and got up, just swinging crazily, connecting. And Deontay Wilder was still like, "Wait, I thought I knocked him out, but what is he doing punching me?" Strange. Hey, strange. Like, hey, no one else has got enough from my knocking. <laughs> yeah. Even though, if you go back and watch it, Deontay Wilder grazed him with the right hand, and De- and Tyson Fury was already following back when Deontay hit him with the left. So he didn't even get the full impact of either of Deontay Wilder's hands. And look what happened to him. And his wife and his coach, you've seen the videos, they were panicked. They were nervous. Well, you know, Tyson Fury's making a business decision right now not to fight Deontay Wilder. But if the, if the environment changes, business people, if the environment changes and what your business operates changes, mm-hmm. you have to do something different. <laughs> so right now, he doesn't have to fight Deontay Wilder. We want it. But he doesn't have to do it. Oh, the, bar, the business of boxing. The business. Still a business. Still a business. So we're just going to have to be satisfied with Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz 2, the sequel. The sequel. Electric Boogaloo. More, <laughs> more than likely in September, possibly on pay-per-view. Here's the thing that is intriguing about this fight is that in the seventh round, Luis Ortiz was close to – stopping Deontay Wilder in a lot of people's eyes. In my eyes, he was not. He he might have been closer to knocking him down, but I saw Deontay Wilder. I made a video about it. You guys seen it and argued with me about it. Deontay walked back to his corner. They put the ice on him. He recovered. And then in the eighth round, right before it started, the doctors looked in his eyes and people said it was controversial. So I think Deontay Wilder was tired of hearing that. And so this, and plus he was sick. He didn't disclose that, but he was sick. So now he wants to be able to fight the guy that nobody else wants to fight and go in there and knock him out without any controversy. And that's what basically what he wants to do. I, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. I, I don't either. I think it's from a business standpoint, we talked about business. This is a good business fight. Good business fight. Uh, How dangerous is it? I think it's very dangerous. Very, very. Luis Ortiz is still a monster. Left-handed monster, southpaw. And he's got a lot of power in those left hands. Y- yes, he does. And it's nothing to take lightly. Nothing to take lightly. He's very skilled. He, yeah. So he's pretty skilled. It's dangerous. It's very dangerous. This is not a. This is not some hand picked opponent. You know. Yeah, people think, oh, he was 39 last time. Now he's 40, and people are saying, oh, he's too old, or maybe he's 55 actually. And <laughs> all of these things, but. They don't want to fight him. Now, Andy, I mean, uh, Anthony Joshua was trying to make the fight with him. And I don't feel that the management on Luis wanted it to happen in the manner because I don't think he was ready at that time to actually like he was in he wasn't in boxing shape to fight mm-hmm. him. And that's ultimately why they turned it down, even though Luis Ortiz said he still wanted the fight. His management didn't. I feel that if he would have faced Anthony Joshua, it would have been trickier for Anthony Joshua because he's left-handed. Now you have five weeks to prepare for a left-handed. I don't think that fight ever really was going to get made, to be honest, on either side. I, I don't think it was the right move for either side to nope. make. Nope. Um, left-handed, short notice, no. Nope. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's <laughs> No way. And Joshua needs an opponent that allows him to keep momentum. True. So maybe get a quick knockout. True. At least – a victory. A victory. A sure victory. Sure a, victory. A, a, a high percentage victory. <laughs> we, sorry, Andy Ruiz. We're not trying to disrespect you, brother. 
No, uh, the likelihood of victory is strong. True. It's not. It's not. Is in question. Yeah. Yeah. It's eighty five percent chance. No, eighty. Eighty percent chance. Look, Andy, you hear that, Andy? If you happen to see this or listen to this, if you happen to listen to this, you have a twenty percent chance in the eyes of Hendo. Hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's better than Vegas is giving you. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Yeah, Vegas is not nice and not kind. But, you know, Ortiz being 40, I don't think that's a consideration. His, uh, his, he, hasn't, he doesn't have a lot of fights on his belt professionally. True. Doesn't have a lot of miles. True. And he's in good shape. Have you seen him? He's in pretty good shape. I think it'll be fine. Who in good shape? Luis Ortiz. Oh now, oh now, yeah, okay, yeah, oh yeah, because he knows that the fight. I believe that he's getting in better shape. I believe that he, they pretty much had because they're both with Al Heyman's financial advisor for both fighters, and so I'm pretty sure they had this in the tuck in case the Deontay Wilder Anthony Joshua negotiations didn't go fast enough. And Deontay knows something that he's not telling people, and that's the reason why he scheduled this fight basically. People just, I wanted you to know that Deontay Wilder would fight Anthony Joshua next if it was actually going to happen. But based on the talks, they needed more time. He said, guess what, guys? I'm not going to wait around for you. So if you guys remember last week and the week before, Deontay said, hey, we're going to not put this out in public so that we can get this done behind the scenes. Because when we add the public, things go left. And the first thing that happened after Deontay knocked the guy out, now they're going public with, well, we want to fight Deontay Wilder. But they already knew that Luis Ortiz was going to fight Deontay. He was in the ring after the fight with Dominic Brazil. Right then. Right then. So we already knew this was coming. Eddie Hearn knew it was coming, but he wants to play these games. Oh, Deontay, we want to fight. We want to invite you to the fight now. We want to stop it. Propaganda. You know it. Propaganda. It's part of the business of boxing. Part of this business of boxing. When you know something's not going to happen, oh, God, they're start saying they want to fight. So it makes it look like Deontay doesn't want to fight Anthony Joshua. But if you know the history of this saga, for the last two years, they've been trying to get a fight. They were dangling carrots in front of Deontay Wilder. They wouldn't put a rematch clause in. And now he's finally fed up and said, guess what, guys? I'm going to fight Tyson Fury. He did that. Now, fighting Luis Ortiz. He didn't want to fight Dominic Brazil, but... It was mandated because you guys couldn't come to terms. You gave him a $100 million deal. Not really. $40 million for two fights with no extra, nothing extra, and then a $20 million fight against his choosing. The, the biggest the biggest boxing sensation in the in the sport right now. Yes. And they want to shortchange him. It's exactly. not a deal that he should have t- taken to begin with. And that's why he didn't take it. And it's good business sense. Pay-per-view is dead. Pay-per-view is not going to die. Pay-per-view is supply and demand. If you have the, if there's a demand, you supply the fight. But you have to have the right fight. That's it. And this is the right fight: Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder. So they're going to pay. So you don't. Anthony Joshua already has endorsement deals set up in England, so he's covered. Deontay Wilder should be able to get the gate. The advertisement, his production company, all his promotion company, all of those rights. And you guys are trying to take that away. So go back, negotiate this in private, like Deontay said, and stop trying to make it public. Because if you're doing that, you're just posturing. It's posturing, and someone's going to get offended. Uh, someone's pride is going to get hurt. Yep. And the fight won't get made. And it won't get made. Or, or when it comes to fruition, they'll be p- past their prime. Yeah, and I hope, I hope we don't see this. Lenny Lewis, Riddick Bowe, where I don't want to see that. Somebody throws a belt in the trash can. It's not going to be Deontay Wilder. I, I trust you. He's not going to throw his belt in the trash can. And come on, guys. Let's just fight. Let's just fight. Sit down. Okay, Anthony Joshua, what do you say on first take that they want? he wants to meet Deontay face-to-face now and talk? For what? So they, No, they want to hash it out. I want to see that happen. That, that, why? Because the, you let the business people do that. No, 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 no. The business people have been messing it up. So he said he wants to face to face. Are you? Wait, wait, wait. The business people work for the boxers. Am I right or wrong? They do actually, but let them tell it though. See, no. <laughs> you talking about face to face? No, that that's not changing nothing. But Anthony Joshua is telling the public that he wants it to be 
face to face. They meet in a room. They hash it out. No promoters. No business team. Just mano y mano. What is that going to accomplish? Well, <laughs> they say it's going to be a fight. Now, Deontay Wilder maybe last year said that they were texting, and he said Anthony Joshua wanted fifty million, and he he, he showed it to him, and they didn't want the fight. Now the people, the UK people are saying, oh, that never happened. Even Dillian White from the UK is on record to saying he saw that the deal was true. But at that time, Anthony Joshua didn't want the fight. Now, I do believe now he wants to fight him, but you can't shortchange him. Deontay's like number 34 top athlete uh, in the world in popularity and all those metrics. And Anthony Joshua was like 60-something. Yeah, so... The the draw here is Wilder. Yes. Wilder's the draw. He's the name. In in the US. Now in the UK, Anthony Joshua sells ninety thousand and all that because it's a smaller market. I understand that. But where where are we gonna fight? We're not fighting in the UK. Not the fir- Are they gonna fight in the UK? Uh, no. I hope the rematch. If there's a rematch, I hope so. The first fight, because Anthony Joshua's here now, fighting in Madison Square Garden Saturday night, I hope it is in the US the first fight. Because that's where the money is. Pay-per-view wise, U.S. Pay-per-view, Madison Square Garden. Or the Barclays. Or the Barclays. Or Vegas, a T-Mobile arena. Sure. But I think that's that's proper. That's yeah. appropriate. So. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua, we want to see that fight. 